if you are familiar with my channel, you may well have heard me talk a little bit about mixed media paper. Mixed media paper for also with this mixed media paper, then yes, but mixed media I use mixed media. Paper. I recommend it for a lot of my video painting tutorials. However, I do feel that I haven't shown this paper quite enough loving. So in this video, I'm going to share with you why I love it, how I use it, and why I really believe painting on this paper can make you a better watercolor artist. Let's get into it. So I have here on my watercolor board two pieces of paper. The one on this side here, this is the De La Rowney mixed media paper, and this is what it looks like, just so you can see. Um, it's suitable for all of these medias here, and here is the weight. This is an A4 spiral bound pad, in case you're interested. And this here is a sheet of high quality, hot pressed watercolor paper. And I believe this one is from Saunders Waterford or Arches. They're very similar brands and behave in the same way, if you like. So I'm going to show you how much easier it is to create watercolor on this one compared to this one. Now, I'm not saying that any one is better than the other, okay? As you progress with your painting, you'll certainly see a difference in a higher quality watercolor paper for sure. But the issue I have found when you're new to watercolor painting is the blending and application process. Now clearly, the better quality the paper, the better the result will be in the end. But this is all about gaining your confidence as a watercolorist and putting paint onto paper that you can see a fast result with okay so which is why I'm showing you the two extremes now they do vary in price the one on my left here probably costs about um, eight pounds in the UK and this one probably costs three times as much I will link both of these papers in the description box underneath this video should you want to check them out for yourselves what I will say very quickly is I can't seem to find any more of this particular daily around your paper, but I have found a very similar one. I think they've just changed maybe the, the packaging a little bit. So you may see a different packaging, but it's the same, a different sort of layout on the cover here, but it's a multimedia, multi-technique paper from De La Rowney at 200 GSM. Okay, so let me show you how I apply the paint and why I think it's really super easy. The brushes I'm using, and this is quite important also, I've got two sizes here. These are spotters which have a shorter bristle. These ones are from Rosemary & Co. Um, an old uh, Kalinsky sable one that I have that I haven't used for some time. Um, I just want to use them up. And these days I'm buying synthetic brushes. These are red dot and these are faux um, or synthetic brushes. And my very old, really trusty number two flat series 302 from Rosemary & Co. Now this is a particularly good brush for me to use and I'll be demonstrating with this brush throughout the tutorial. It has a flat end here as you can see and used wet or dry super good for blending but I'll show you as we work through but these are the brushes I will be using and once again I will link them in the description underneath this video. The paints I've chosen for today are, forgive me for saying it incorrectly, um, these are from um, May Marie Bleu or May Marie Blue um, just because they're new and I like them and I haven't really used them very much and they are single pigment paints and are of a very high quality but this this procedure will work whatever paints you will be using, but as always, I will link them underneath this video should you want to check them out for yourself. Okay, let me show you what I mean. And I'm going to compare the two so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just going to mix a small puddle of any color here on my palette. I'm going to be using my number two spotter. So let's pick something really vibrant like uh, magenta or something like that to start with. So let's have a lovely little puddle of magenta. Okay. First of all, I'm going to show you, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, wet on dry, which means I'll be applying the, pa the paint directly onto the paper. So let me show you on this paper first. So we'll, I'm going to go on here, straight onto the paper, wet on dry, as if I were painting a flower or whatever it is we're painting in that tutorial. So I'm applying the paint like this, okay, I'm just cleaning my brush and just blending it through. Okay, so you can see already that by doing this, blending it seems super easy because it's not sinking into the cotton paper that we have here. So I'll show you on this one what I mean. So just comparing the two side by side. Let's add a bit more pigment. So straight onto the paper, 
like this, cleaning my brush as I would normally do, patting it dry, patting it dry, and then just blending it through. Now, because we have a cotton paper here, you probably can't see the result, but I promise you, when you're blending it in, you can feel it sticking and absorbing into the paper, okay? Which is fine, it's what we want it to do, but if you're new and you're going to start layering this up, you'll see what I mean as we work through. So just gonna let that dry a second. And while we're waiting, we'll do wet on wet, which means we need to wet the paper first of all before dropping in the paint. With the cotton paper, it's going to sink in more quickly. With the mixed media paper, it's going to sit on the surface a little bit longer, which is why it does make a difference. I'm going to drop this in first of all, add a bit more pigment. And you can see it is actually still floating on the surface. I should have left that settle a little bit longer. And let's go with the other one. So dropping that in, and again, you can see how it's floating on the surface. A good idea is just to let that sink in a little bit more. But I'm cleaning my brush and on the mixed media paper, I can blend it through really, really quickly. And on the cold press paper, I can feel it sticking, okay? It just feels a little bit more sticky as I'm working through. Just going to let that settle a moment. Whilst these two things are drying, I'm just going to show you with my flat brush how I lift out on both of these, because this is something people quite often like to do is by lifting out the paint like this. Now it does depend on the paint that you use, but both of these lift out really, really easily. But mixed media paper will lift out obviously a lot quicker and a lot easier because that paint isn't being absorbed into the, into the paper, okay? Because it's obviously, not made of cotton. So if lifting out is one of the things that you like to do, let me just pack that dry with some kitchen paper so that you can see. The lifting out on the mixed media paper is a lot, lot better. I'll show you that again. So damp brush, by damp I mean I'm cleaning the brush into the water and really sort of squeezing the excess water out of that brush and by putting a little bit of pressure, and I'm putting the same amount of pressure on both of these. Okay, that's how that one's come out on this side. This is the cold pressed, and we'll do the same on the other. The mixed media. I mean, that is night and day different, okay? So I'm just gonna let these dry a minute before I show you the next point. But as you can see, when watercolor dries, you have this kind of, Tie, well, kind of, kind of like a tide mark around the outside of the edge here. And again, you can blend that through on both papers quite well. But you can see on the higher quality paper, it's still sticking, whereas on the lower quality paper, you get a much better blend. Let's put something really bright in, go wet on dry again. Do a little square here. You can see the application process is really, really easy on this, but on this one, I can almost feel it absorbing into the, the paper as I'm applying it. It's hard to describe and I hope the camera can pick it up, but it's just, it just feels different. And with a damp brush, I can just soften out the outside edge of this. Keep cleaning my brush. And we'll try it on the cold press paper. Now I have got another video where I show you my actual application process. And I'll link it on the top of the screen now in case you'd like to take a look at that. But while we're waiting for that to dry, let's just take a look at these two at the same time. So again, with my damp brush, we can start to create, or try to create a lovely blend with that brush. Notice on the hot press paper, how it's kind of becoming a little bit bitty. 
and let's go to the mixed media paper. Again, using a very, very light touch, just blending that through. Okay, so these are beginning to dry now. Go into my, cold pre my hot press paper and using my damp brush again, just to merge these together. Again, it's sticking. And on my mixed media paper, it just makes it so much easier. I guess this is something you have to try for yourself to really see and feel the difference of the two. But what you'll notice is the, the end results look the same. So by putting so much less effort into the mixed media paper, you will get pretty much the same results from a really high quality watercolor paper. And if lifting out is your thing, if you feel that you've made any mistakes, for example, if you may have gone outside that pencil line, just use your flat brush and pat it dry. And any mistakes can be remedied really, really easily. You can see I've gone just outside the line here, just by using that blending brush and patting it dry, the mistake has gone. So as you can see, the end results look the same, but for the less amount of effort, this is the better one. So if you are really looking to enhance your confidence as a watercolorist, I would say go with the mixed media paper. I have definitely found that, that the hot press paper is far more difficult to handle, but maybe that's just me, and I know that a lot of you will comment on it and say that they prefer it, but we all have our preferences, and I honestly think if you start your paintings on a mixed media paper, it will give you that boost that you need to create paintings that you like without having to worry if you make a mistake, it, it's wrong, you have to start again. You really, really don't. You can usually remedy your mistakes on this kind of paper. Now, I have a lot of tutorials where I painted with mixed media paper, um, just watercolor painting on mixed media paper. So if you would like to try this method for yourself, we do have a full playlist, which I'll put at the end of this video. So click through and I'll see you there. If you have found value in this video, do give it a thumbs up. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you like me and you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification. We have full length tutorials every single Tuesday. So if you don't want to miss out, you may want to hit that subscribe button and bell notification so that you can learn to level up your watercolor painting. So I'll stick that playlist at the end. So click through and I'll see you there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.